electric pinnacle at Porsche is the all-new Porsche Taycan Turbo GT. There is the Taycan facelift and introducing with that one is this new Turbo GT top version today with a racetrack feature. How good is it in the performance and can it beat the Tesla Model S Plaid? We'll find out here with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K full screen full length. Let's go. This is the normal Taycan Turbo GT if you can say normal. Also, especially a green noirish color. You can see here, even sport here in the lower part. Then PCCB, the ceramic brake, is standard. You can also see it right here. Really massive, 21 inch wheels. Side profile, normal Taycan length, but you can already see here carbon fiber elements. Around 75 kilograms of weight reduction if you compare it to a Turbo S because they use carbon fiber, uh, carbon fiber elements. And towards the rear, that's why I said normal version, here there is this carbon fiber wing, but it's in comparison just a small rear wing and the Turbo GT batch. Special is that here either 2.3 seconds in the acceleration figure for the normal Turbo GT, that's 0.1 seconds quicker than the Turbo S, so they can squeeze a little bit more performance out of it. Or you can even go with 2.2 seconds if you have the Turbo GT with Weissach package. Listen and repeat, Weissach. It's a small town in the, in the, you know, near Stuttgart in Germany where Porsche has their performance uh, stuff, everything localized. So here, different color, Turbo GT with Weissach package and from the front, it's maybe not too different, but you soon see it towards the rear. I mean, it looks already spectacular, but then it has this additional fixed rear carbon fiber wing. You also here see the Weissach logo. This is, by the way, the test track where they do their performance testing. Then they are in Weissach. And this, I mean, is it too much for you or what do you say? Tell me in the comments. Overall here then, around 1,100 horsepower total power output. There's even a special attack mode available that gives you 120 kilowatt of extra peak performance for around 10 seconds. And today we'll drive that one here on the racetrack close to Sevilla in the southern Spain area. So I'm really looking forward how this performs. It also comes standard with the Porsche Active Ride. The suspension that basically rules against the car movements always keeps the car upright. Hydraulic actually you know, extra hydraulic damper at every single wheel. So this is a very impressive system and we see how this one keeps the car also in the racing, not only upright for comfort, but also increasing the performance. So when they did the record lap times now, for example, on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, they were actually 26 seconds quicker than the outgoing pre facelift Turbo S Taycan and this means like it actually means the world in these relations. What I really love with the Taycan facelift is here that you now get this illuminated Porsche logo at the rear that looks really stunning and also upgraded battery here with the facelift 97 kilowatt hours net now. That's also then standard for the Turbo GT. A manual charging flap and only on the passenger side here 320 kilowatt DC peak, 18 minutes, 10 to 80% state of charge. And that is also a record thing. For weight reasons, we only have it here on this side and also only manual. Usually a normal Taycan facelift would have it electric and also on both sides for convenience. But this one is definitely also about weight savings and especially even more so in the Weissach pack because usually here the Turbo GT, 75 kilograms less in weight than the Turbo S. But here then, if you have the Weissach pack, even more, 70 kilograms less in weight, because there you just have this carbon fiber covering and no real rear bench. This is really something for the racetrack. And um, the thing is, yeah, I mean, in a way, this is more to show off to your friends. But then again, after you have showed off to your friends, you cannot carry them inside, you know, just one friend at a time. So, yeah, then I would maybe think for showing off to friends in a way without the Weissach package is better because you can show three more friends at the very same time, right? <laughs> well, let's get inside the Turbo GT Taycan and here also 
ah, that hurts a little bit. Always when you're going over this, you know, this side here, this is really hard. So to get in and out is not ideal, I would say. These are then, you see the special bucket seats for the Turbo GT, look really amazing. Also in here, race checks, so there's the microfiber, really soft and nice. That's good also for the comfort. And of course, they hold you tighter, especially on the racetrack, but they're really, yeah, really stiff also in the, in the top part. So for the racetrack, it's actually good. Um, you can also electronically pump them up. You can see it like this. So this function is available. Let's go down again. I'm not sure if I would like to drive with them long term. Um, so yeah, I would think about if you go for this one for everyday driving. Maybe not for the racetrack. Yeah, you can you can do this. Also here a race tech steering wheel. I love that and more microfiber here also on the dashboard. That looks really amazing. Let me power up the vehicle and you can also see that here everything you know with a new facelift and so on. Weiser badge is here as well. And also normal, like a normal Taycan facelift here in the middle part, you control the temperature, for example. Also have this kind of feedback from the steering. And here then on the steering wheel, you not only have the drive mode selector, this button is here for the attack mode, extra boost. And in the lower part, you have an additional one for the PASM. So that's the suspension setting you can individualize then while driving. Right, well, here in the Turbo GT, with the visor package, you can also introduce the attack mode here with the right shifting pedal. Door closing sounds. Sounds actually pretty cool, although this is here frameless and we also have the dual insulation here as well. And let's also check out the rear door closing sound. That's actually also really nice, right? It's super weird to see this, right? You know, when you don't have the rear bench. <laughs> yeah, and all this carbon fiber. Also, here, by the way, carbon fiber at the back part of the seats. Okay, so you don't have a usable rear bench then here in the Weissach package, but what about the trunk? Is that one at least normal? Let's check it out. Button right here. Ah, no electric hatch. All about weight savings. Oh, this is indeed different. Look at that. See here? So this has this step then here inside. Interesting. Underneath, there is still space for a cable though. Now the Turbo GT without the Weissach package. First of all, here we also have electric hatch, but there's still the step here in the trunk, you know. There's a nice stitching by the way, but why is that actually? Underneath there's the Pulse Inverter, Pulse Wechselrichter, listen and repeat, Pulse Wechselrichter. So it's a, actually like a piece of the electric components and it's actually at the same position, but just more voluminous because you need more power at the rear axle here for the GT version. So yeah, with more power, more tech is needed and then you also lose some space in the trunk. That's the, you know, like the, the background for it here, once again, electric. And now here without the Visa package, you also still have the rear bench in the Taycan Turbo GT, just as it is in a normal Taycan facelift. And here you can also see, also here in the front, this is now when I do not go for the bucket seats. And they would also be available with this retro papita we've seen in the normal Taycan facelift. So this, in this case, then the animal skin spec. But just to show you that it's also possible without bucket seat. And here, this is interesting, this is here a floor mat with the carbon fiber look, but a little bit greasy, I would feel. Not sure if that's a good idea for a floor mat. Um, yeah, but anyway, just to show you this differentiation. Yeah, the comfort is way better here in the normal sport seats here than in the bucket seats. And the best comfort would indeed be the standard sport seats with the Pepita with this retro fabric because it adapts best to the body and also the most animal friendly solution. Then here, headroom, still something left. This is the one with the panoramic roof. This is a fixed panoramic roof and I measured here to the side to the panoramic roof. It's even more. And you can see here it's all the way fixed. Well, in the rear, Turbo GT, I would say it works. I mean, with the head here to the side, it gets really, really close. I need to put my head more to the inside. Yeah, and then legroom, it works also when the tall driver is driving, but it's not the most comfortable situation. Here, by the way, you can see now in this electrochromic shade, now Leah shows you this electrochromic function for the roof. Here in the infotainment system, you can actually select that and then you can go through these different modes. So like this, clear, then it's completely closed in a way. 
or you can also have these half modes, so to speak. There you see it, maybe like it's like half open, half closed. That's more for show off, I feel. Here the normal Turbo GT without the Weissach package also has the electric charging flap and also here this additional one on the driver's side just for AC charging them. So does the Turbo GT also have a normal frunk or is there also another pulse inverter or something? Nah, this one is absolutely normal just like it is with a normal Taycan. All right, now Taycan Turbo GT launch control. Let's see how that one goes. Wait for it. <laughs> that was to 220. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I was feeling like my, my skin was being moved backwards like in a uh, you know like in a comic movie or something like that and now we're taking it on the race track oh my stomach can't even it can't even keep up with that not even my voice wow oh my god well the performance is just right there you know yes it's a heavy EV that is the thing with the electric vehicles but since the weight is all centralized and really low to the ground you don't really feel it that much and wow that punch from that oh, it's really hooking up to the ground so well this is also one with a Weissach package so we have the best performance possible and also some of the weight reductions and for this extra 120 kilowatt boost I can also just pull here the pedal accelerate and here pull the pedal and have even more power but I mean, there's so much power induced anyway already that you <laughs> hardly feel that even extra boost because it's already so much steering is just perfect. You see, I don't need hectic movements. I can easily steer it around the corners, keep it really, really controlled and steady. And it can hold on so well while the brakes, they hammer in so good as well. Look at that here, the commands of the steering wheel to the road. I like that the angle is kind of the same and then I open the wheel, acceleration out again. All wheel drive, of course, one electric motor in the rear, one in the front. And then I can also get the power to the ground so nicely. And now we get into some slalom. There we go, wow. I mean, it's a long vehicle, but it masters that one like a sports car. Here however you feel a little bit of a difference to a <sighs> 200 oh, wow and really hard on the brakes oh this is a g-force meter itself so i mean in the slalom you do feel some tire squeaking you feel a difference to a small sports car definitely in tight corners like in the slalom there for example a 718 or something would perform a little bit better um, because it's just lighter you know so at least it feels like that and at some point you feel the weight so it is very extreme it is incredible what this machine can bring to the ground however I have to say you cannot deny the weight in a way you know and I feel that when I drive it a little bit longer so when you're driving like a light sports car a little bit longer on the racetrack it feels lighter on your body somehow you know what i mean so this is the main difference to that difference then to a 911 for example i would say is not that large anymore so i would more feel difference really to a 718 that's that at least what i feel you're getting pushed to the seat so much that's just crazy wow incredible i mean and difference to tesla model s plat I mean, you can always argue like who is the fastest then on, on the drag strip in the point whatever seconds meter. But the main difference is the Taycan is so much better to control in the corners going left and right, especially with these transitions, you know, with the recuperation and the braking and then accelerating again. There, the Tesla Model S Plaid is just not on the same level of agility and, you know, how you can really control the car as I do control it like this here now. So 
control of this vehicle is really at a hundred percent and that's really amazing wow now once again in the slalom look again how the steering commands and how the car is following it's hooking up to the ground so well really really nice wow and one more time accelerating it out <laughs> you are at 100 kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour and then you push it and you feel a push that you would usually feel from a sports car from standstill that is something you know accelerating out of course you still have more power at the rear axle when accelerating out but a pure rear wheel driven sports car would you know let you play around a little bit more that's also one difference and by the way if you want to see what is the consumption on the racetrack it's like triple the consumption that you would have when you go cruise control on the motorway it would, would, would be at 20 or something so stay subscribed or new subscribe if you haven't done so far 